it's still September 24th 2019 and this is episode 3 part 2 of Plane Savers Down Under we'll follow on our visit to the Haas Museum when you come, come to Haas either as an individual or in a group you are assigned a guide to take you through both hangars and the aircraft outside. I'd like to thank my guide, Alistair Telford, who did a fabulous job. He is very enthusiastic and very knowledgeable, as I'm sure all the guides are. I hope you really enjoy your time with your guides at Haas. Here's the um, very special aircraft, the Qantas 747400, the first one. This is the aircraft that has two very important records. One, the longest commercial flight, non-stop from Heathrow to Sydney, and the shortest from Sydney down here to Illawarra Airport. And here now is an opportunity to get an up-close look at one of the high bypass turbofan engines that power these large aircraft these days. This fan in the front is free. It runs free and uh, you'll see as the wind increases, the speed um, of the fan increases. The, the core of the engine is behind the fan. That is the actual jet engine. But the, this air that's brought in through the front blows down beside the core and offers a huge amount of thrust in addition to that generated by the core. Here's a good view of the undercarriage of the uh, 747. The uh, flap supports and the engines and then their pylons. <laughs> Here we are inside the economy section of the Qantas 747 that is down here, the record breaking OJA from the longest flight to the shortest flight. Here's the baby bassinets, everyone loves sitting just behind those, sorry to all those mums out there. Special toilets, unique glass doors. Yes we, we know what these are. <laughs> Uh -huh. These are the seats you get in premium economy. Here's the galley. One of our catering galleys. Uh -huh. This one has a... And this is the lift that takes the food from the galley to the top deck of the uh, 747. Here is an example of the washroom on a 747 and now we'll head upstairs into the upper deck. Here is the upstairs galley and the um, flight attendant seat the area up here being business class and this is uh, an example of business class seating back in those earlier days of this 747 operation. In the cockpit it's only a two man crew. The extra seating is for on international flights, a third pilot is carried as a relief pilot and the fourth pilot or seating is for a check captain. Unfortunately from here on I need to rely on photographs. This commemorative certificate attached to the aircraft gives you the details of the aircraft, how many miles it's flown, how many passengers it's carried. It's a worth a good read.
Now we're in Haas's second hangar and you get a big idea or a good idea of how large both these hangars are for the aircraft that are stored in them. Here we have a Douglas DC-4 being restored. You'll notice as we scan through the pictures that it's painted in two liveries. This side is the Qantas livery and it's done in Norfolk Trader as the name and the other side will be in Airlines in New South Wales. Qantas used these to fly to Lord Howe Island and, Nor and Norfolk Island um, and I can remember seeing one of these stripped down just to the bare metal doing a major, major overhaul. Here is one of the aircraft being or received from the Navy that's being restored. This is a de Havilland Sea Venom and it gives you a good view of the timber fuselage used in those days. And here is the Convair 440 done up in the colours of Trans Australia Airlines TAA which is um, the airline that uh, had the DC-3 we saw in the first video. This particular aircraft um, came from South Africa. TAA didn't fly the 440 or the 240, but this is as close as, um, as Haas can get to represent that aircraft. Here's the other airworthy Neptune that's in the Haas fleet. This is an RAAF aircraft, and that blue and white livery certainly does look good. This Neptune is being used as a spares aircraft for the other two. And here is an example of the Canberra, the first jet bomber the RAAF flew. Unfortunately this one won't be returning to the air. And here is the DHC-4 Caribou. This is the airworthy one. Um, I'm not altogether sure about the one in the hangar, whether that's uh, worthy or not. And again, another treat for Mikey. Here is a C-47 of the Royal Australian Air Force. And as you see, I've tried to line the propeller up to show why it's called the Hamburger Door. And here again is the CAC Sabre, a good example, and also the Hunter, which one of our Prime Ministers was hoping to get. We took the Sabre instead. Thank goodness. This is a rare aircraft, the Moreva, which was flown by Ansett ANA. This is the CAC Windeel wind trainer that we saw in Fighter World. This is a CAC series agricultural aircraft. At the end of the war, CAC built back from the RWF a lot of the Wirraways, the aircraft we saw earlier, and co converted them into crop dusters. And here we have a Navy Oster. And this tracker is airworthy. It only flew into Haas uh, about a week ago. This is one of the aircraft that uh, Haas has taken over from the Royal Australian Navy um, historic flight. This is a consolidated PBY Catalina. Uh, it's painted in an all black scheme um, known as the Black Cats. In fact, you'll see that the logo on the front of the aircraft is Felix the Cat. And this, or these were flown by the RWF on night missions, dropping mines in harbors through the Southwest Pacific. You might recall up in Caboolture we're restoring a Beaufort bomber. 
here is the or part of the nose section of a Beaufort that has been recovered. Now this is a replica of one of the most important aircraft in aviation. The Fokker used by Charles Kingsford Smith, the Southern Cross, to be the first to fly across the Pacific from the United States to Australia. This is a replica, it's being restored having suffered a major accident and the wing spars or both spars were split and later through these photos you'll see how or an example of how that spar has been repaired. It says it here in the note attached to this video, but I cannot express my appreciation enough to Rob Grinet to um, welcome me into his workshop. It's normally not a place visitors come into, and I was most appreciative of being shown around and being able to take photos, which again is a rare privilege. Rob is such a genius in the warbird movement um, it is a rare privilege to be able to accept an invitation like that and i thank him greatly here we have a p40 kitty hawk a stearman one of the p47s and again a p47 incredible what's going on here in this workshop and I'd like to thank Bob Grind very much for the um, privilege of coming here and allowing me to take these photographs. Very generous of him. In these jigs, you'll see the wings being constructed for those P-47 fuselages we saw. Back there in the background is the Bristol Centaurus out of a Bristol Bowfighter. The Bristol Bowfighter is another project that Rob has underway. It'll be great to see a Bowfighter flying again. It's amazing what Rob has in the works. Here is a wreck and a part restored fuselage from a K Wasaki. KI-61. And these are the centre sections for the Bristol Bowfighter, the project that's underway. Outside of the Haas Museum, there are a number of aircraft stored, ready for repainting or further restoration work. There's a C-47, two Fokker Friendships, among others. The Friendships, one has got a registration of EW, so it may be painted in East West Airlines colours, and the other one has a TQ registration and may be painted in TAA colours. I hope you've enjoyed your visit to the Haas Museum, the Historical Aircraft Restoration Society here at Illawarra Airport. My thanks to Alistair Telford and my huge thanks to Rob Grinet. I hope you've enjoyed the journey.